with HMRC. So employees of HMRC are a little bit more normal than investment bankers, but I would not go so far as to say that they're actually normal people. Anybody from HMRC here? No? Good. Because this is a very negative talk for HMRC stuff. They are all lovely. Christmas 2012, I think. We sent around all of the HMRC people in one of their centres an email saying, please sign up. Oh, sorry, please view this Christmas e-greetings card you've been given by your colleague. It doesn't actually say Christmas e-greetings card because this is the civil service and you can't say Christmas. Um, it's a winter e-greetings card it's been sent to you by a colleague who does payroll giving. So this is a, somebody who, who already works for HMRC, already does payroll giving. So they're sort of a peer who does payroll giving. We also give them an added incentive that if you go to the website and open your e-greetings card, you'll be entered into a prize draw to win one of for festive hampers, which aren't Christmas hampers, they're festive hampers, and they contain none of the following things. Dairy, meat, alcohol, gluten. I think that was it. What we're basically offering you is an incentive to win a box of jam, because jam's okay. It isn't diabetic friendly jam, but they didn't ask me to take out the sugar, so it's all okay. So they see these greetings cards, it's very, very simple treatment. Some people, see the greetings card with Harriet's happy smiley face in the top right hand corner and some people see it without Harriet's happy smiley face in the right corner. Harriet is the person at HMRC with whom we collaborated on this so she's actually excellent. She's been a great sport. We just, we're just going to have a set of things, sorry. Um, so what happens to sign up so during this campaign? HMRC is the best government department at payroll giving. About 10% of them give, which is practically a no cabinet office where I worked until very recently and I think in the region of 50 payroll givers. Despite the fact that payroll giving is a policy area, sits with us. Not great. None of our ministers buy that, by the way. If anyone's looking for a soundbite, I didn't see it. Anyway, so what happened people signed up? So, control group. Don't see a face, 2.9% of people do sign up. Other group, 6.4%. Big increase. They're not giving, they're not, these people are not investment bankers. We're not getting hundreds and hundreds of thousands and thousands of pounds out of them. We are getting small but substantive donations. This is the lifeblood of giving, despite the fact that I think I was talking with a lot of somebody who I'm not going to name in case they're not going to do. But basically, most of the donations come from a very, very small, most of the donations by volume come from a very small number of donors. But if we're interested in the behaviour of donors, then actually looking at the guys at the, at the bottom end of the donation scale by size is more interesting for me. So, so we get an effect there. So that's really interesting to me. Finally, we've got about organ donation, which is an example of time. It's about 1,000 people a year die because they don't have enough organs. And these are broadly <coughs> preventable. So some of them you're never going to prevent, but some of them would be preventable if we either had more people on the organ donation register, or if we had more young people riding motorcycles. Because young people riding motorcycles are essentially organ donors in Britain. It's really great. Young people can't ride motorcycles very well. They're going to drop them. They're going to die. It's really unpleasant. When they do die, handily, they've got all of their stuff encapsulated in a nice leather bag, so it all stays together until we can get them to the hospital. <laughs> That's what I was talking to somebody at the um, NHSBT, which is the blood, and, the blood and Transplants Service. And this is basically the, the case they gave me for get signing up young people, because young people are more likely to ride motorcycles, and when they do, they're going down. Perhaps <laughs> <laughs> is very well. Anyway, so it doesn't really seem as though the government can advocate a policy of getting young people to drive motor motorcycles badly. We also can't have a, a, a public information campaign that looks something like think once, think twice, think like, swerve and hit him so he gets an organ donated. I probably wouldn't work very well after years of getting people to drive text motorcyclists. But we do have a powerful tool available to us, which is a change of the fault. We can just make it so that everybody is automatically signed up to the organ donation register. However, we've chosen not to do that in this country. There are, it's a matter of political philosophy, we have chosen not to do it, we're not doing it. Many other countries do it, their organ donation rates are very, very high. And it's the registration for the paid the jury's still out and all they have to say in all lives. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at when people, oops, too far, when people renew their tax disc for their car, back on driving, we're going to ask them if they want to sign up to the organ donation register. As a caveat, we did this trial before with what's called active choice, where we asked people, to, they had to make a choice in order to complete their tax disc form. Do you want to sign up to the organ donation register? And when tried elsewhere, this is a yes no question, and yes is having that massively boost registrations. What happened in the UK was the lawyers got hold of it, and so it was, yes, I'm already 
registered or no, not now. So on the topic of moral licensing, the fact that you're saying no, not now, sounds to me as if you can say, well, I'm, I'm definitely going there, it's really busy right now, I can't bother to fill in an extra form. And so that intervention considerably reduced the number of people signing up for the organisation, so compared to the baseline, we didn't have this accurate choice. So these things don't always work. So what we did now was we had eight variants. So please pay attention because it will be a great. So the standard control group is basically saying, thanks for completing your form, would you like to turn it to the organisation register? Second one, we say many, every day thousands of people like you sign up for the organisation register. Third group, we say exactly the same thing, which is in this nice generic stock image of happy smiling people. And in the fourth one we have the logo of the organisation service, as well as this message. In the fifth one, because we have a lot of M here, so we just bundle treatments together to see if something stick. We say three people die every day because, they're, because they don't have an organ available. I mean, these are three lives you could save. This is basically a loss framing. We then have six, nine lives could be transformed. So essentially, this is if you're the perfect donor and you die at the perfect moment, then theoretically we could transplant bits of you into nine different people and save them all or help all of them. This is quite unlikely to occur. We could, we could theoretically. Seventh one is reciprocity. If you needed an organ transplant, would you have one? Essentially, do you want to, we think we are, I'm framing this as a best possible but that sounds a bit more ambiguous. But essentially, we're saying, if you wanted an organ, would you want to be available to you? So essentially, you're trying to say, if you want one, then you better give one now. Because that's how the small thing works. Finally, I want to say, if you support organization, put your support into action. So essentially, like, do something about the support we have. Because everyone supports organization, many people support organization, very few people register. This is, this is just that again. So, I'm just going to run through very quickly. Please raise your hand if you think that the control group is going to be the best. No one. You've seen this kind of presentation before. No one ever shows you a successful control group. <laughs> Who thinks the norm method is going to be the best? Is it on here? Anyone think norm and the picture is going to be the best? Okay. Quite a number. Norm and the logo of the organ donation service. Okay. Three people die every day. Okay. People? Good. I'm not going to keep them track. <laughs> Punish each other later if you're wrong. <laughs> Nine lives. The reciprocity treatment. Okay. And the action treatment. Okay. One, two, three. Okay. So, has anyone here seen me talk before? Okay, you have. So, do you know that I'm on reciprocity? No, the lady behind me. Um, do you know that I'm on a reciprocity kit? And this is why, yeah, okay. Good shout. So, control group, we get 2.3% of people to sign up. By the way, our end here is a little bit over a million. So these are actually quite substantive numbers. Take action, does pretty well, good. Thousands of people register every day, also good. This is the normal message. Heart picture, about the same, which is more or less we expect. Nine lives can be transformed, about the same. Three people every day, a bit better, significantly better, mostly because we have this enormous M. And would you have a donation if, an organ if you need one? So this is the reciprocity treatment. As I said, I'm on a reciprocity kick at the moment. So, this is our best treatment. These two here are not significantly different from one another. So these two do the best. Those of you who said those two, congratulations, and what is off the gold star or whatever it is you fancy warning yourself. The picture of people, however, has a substantive negative effect. This is a treatment, this is an effect we're seeing actually surprisingly regularly. When we start putting stock photos of generic, happy, smiling people, into our treatments. Those treatments, even when all we're varying is the happy, smiling photo of people, are performing substantially worse. So that's interesting. So those of you who said that the picture of the people was going to be affected, sorry, Elizabeth. Um, so that raises 100,000 extra donors per year of the organization. So this is not a small number of people. The effect sizes are actually reasonably small in terms of actual real computation. So NHS economists who are way smarter and better cost benefit analysis than I am, so this is going to save about two or three lives a year for the rest of time. So I'm fairly happy with that. Normally in my life as a generic civil servant, I don't get to save lives, so I get to feel like that. I also get to feel slightly less bad about not having tried to pursue medicine. Yeah. Not that I would have been any good. Anyway. So we've got a few examples of field experiments I've given you. They vary a bit in their environment and they vary quite a lot in their complexity. So changing the website for the HMRC payroll giving registration is very, very simple. This takes a guy on my team about 20 minutes to do. 
getting volunteers to go around the investment bank, getting celebrities to go to the right place at the right time, in a random order, without them knowing that they're being sent to different places in a random order, that's a lot harder. We also have different projects. We have civil servants on one end, we have the broad morass of the British public who drive cars and therefore probably don't live in London in another, and civil servants and investment bankers and everything else. These show that insights from other places, so be it from big data sets, from other from lab studies, from other fields who we brought into this charitable giving world, and we can hopefully make good progress. And the main thing I want to take away from the lab is we don't really know what works. Until we test things, and it's this is why it's so important for us to test things, we don't know what's going to work. The strangest things can backfire. So there's a professor somewhere called Barak Ariel who ran a tax experiment very similar to our own, which has been hugely effective in Israel. And the Israeli government lost about 40 million pounds in tax revenue just over the course of the trial. This is a very short trial, which is in fact discontinued early for this exact reason. But the treatment they thought would work didn't. And this is why it's so important to test because actually we have no idea whether these things are going to work. And often, we don't have any idea if they're working at the time we're doing them without a counter So that's everything I have to say. I don't know if there's any final questions or if I pass it over. No, you're doing well. You have about seven minutes. Okay, so it'll have approximately seven minutes worth of questions. <laughs> you can take more than one question.